Now before we go ahead and open up the Access 2013 program, I want you to know that when I create my databases, I'm going to be storing them in my Exercises folder on my desktop. In fact, let me go ahead and double click to open it up and hey, we already have one in there. It's the Books database. Yay! Let's go ahead and close out of there and open up the Access 2013 program. Now if you have the shortcut on your desktop like I do, you can go ahead and give it a double click or if it's down on the taskbar, just give it a single click and it opens right up. There you go, Access. Now in the startup screen, you can do one of two things. You can either go ahead and create a database from scratch by using the blank template, or you can look at one of these other templates if you want to have something that's pre-built, and you can tweak it, of course, like the asset tracking, contacts, you can scroll down. Or if you've been working on a database and you want to open it back up, you can look at the recent list if it's listed there, or just go ahead and click on Open Other Files. Now in the recent list, you can see that you got this little push pin. When you get a lot of recent databases you've been working on, it takes the most recent of all of them and puts them up at the top, and then all the others get dropped off eventually. So if you don't want it to drop off, and you'll always want it to be there, that link, you see that little push pin, click on it, and it pins it in, and it draws a line between the permanent and those that are recent or temporary. If it's not recent enough, then it will roll off, and it won't be listed there. You can go ahead and unpin it, and it's back in the recent list there. So you can go ahead and click on that and it opens it up, the database that's in that folder. And if you notice in the folder we have, well it shows here that there should be another database. We only saw one, it was the books database, which tells you that you can go ahead and move the databases out of their current location and Access won't keep track of it. But what you can do, since it's no longer there, is you can go ahead and give it a right click and say, hey, remove it from the list because it's no longer in that folder. That way you don't get these felonious uh, recent links here. So if it's not recent, you can click on Open Other Files, and it says, okay, where is this file? Is it on the SkyDrive? Is it on the computer somewhere? And again, you get the recent list, and also you get the push pins if you want to do it there. You can go to the computer, and it opens up, and it says, okay, is it a recent folder that you were looking in? Hey, that's pretty cool. Not just recent files or databases, but also recent folders. So it'll take me right to that folder, and also you can pin that in. It draws the line from a folder that you always want to be listed there as opposed to the most recent that eventually get dropped off if you don't use them. I'm going to go ahead and unpin it so it drops back down into the recent folders or if it's not there go ahead and click browse and then it opens up the open window go to the desktop double click on the exercises folder and there it is and then double click on it to open it up or click cancel and we can go ahead and click back and since it's there as one of the recents click on that and boom, there you go. This is what a finished database looks like, or at least the one that I created, where you have all your objects, as we talked about in the PowerPoint presentation. You've got your tables, the foundation of the database, where it stores all the data, the raw data, like books, a table for customers, and for the orders, and then the queries that we can go ahead and pull, not everything out of the table, but just go ahead and filter those things that we want to see. And then you have forms, which is an organized way of entering in data into the tables, as opposed to opening up the table and entering your data directly into the table. And then you've got your reports that you can go ahead and print off the data. Let's go ahead and start up in the upper left hand corner and work our way from left to right and then top to bottom. So in the upper left hand corner, when you open up your database, you're going to have the access icon to let you know that you're in the access program. You can also see it over here, it says access. Then you have the quick access toolbar, which we'll go over in a later training video, meaning that you can quickly access the commands on the toolbar in a single click as opposed to bouncing around on these tabs here to access your commands. And then over to the right you have the title bar, which is the title of the database books, and then where it's located, and then the file format, if it's a most recent format, like Access 2007 through 2013. And then over to the right you've got the Help button, and then you have the basic window operation buttons, like minimizing the window, restoring it down, and closing out. You also have the Sign In, where you can access your documents anywhere there's internet connection if you want to go ahead and use the SkyDrive, one of Microsoft's uh, features, to be able to load your database up to it. And then, again, anywhere there's internet connection, be able to pull that down onto your laptop in Bangladesh, I guess. And then below that, you have what's known as the ribbon. Now, you have a bunch of commands to cut, copy, paste commands, and they're organized onto different tabs. So here's the Home tab, the more popular uh, commands that you'll be using. And notice that these commands have a line in between them. They're known as groups. So when you're talking about views or the different views, you got a line that separates that from this other group known as the clipboard group. Then the sort and filter, records, find, text formatting, 
and you can see that when we go to another tab it has other commands divided into groups when it comes to creating things like the tables queries forms reports let me go back to the home tab and then within the group if there's more commands than what you see there it'll have what is called an expandable dialog box button or the more button you can go ahead and click on that and it opens up and it displays more commands in this case the clipboard let me go ahead and close out of that now as you can see when I click on these tabs the only thing that changes is the ribbon here however let me go back to the home tab if I click on the file tab it takes me to what is called the backstage it wipes out the front stage where I can work on my database and it takes me backstage when it comes to well finding out more information about the database encrypting the database with the password you got the database properties like who the author is, company, information that you don't want to store in a table, but in the backstage here. And let me go ahead and click cancel. You can open up other databases, save it, print it, do the options here when you want to, again, customize the environment for your database, which we'll go over later on. Let me click cancel. So back to the front stage again. When you go backstage, you click on the file tab. If you want to get back to the front stage, just click on the back arrow and it takes you right back. And then you can work on your database. And then below that, as we briefly discussed, you got the navigation pane that if you got a lot of tables that you want to look at and you don't want to see all the queries and forms, you want to hide them, go ahead and click on the double arrow to collapse them. And then that way you get more of the tables that you can see and expand them, of course. Let's open them back up. And then to collapse the entire navigation pane, known as the shutter bar, click on the double arrows pointing to the left and it collapses. You don't have to click on the double arrows here to open it back up. You can just simply click on the bar and it opens it back up. You also get the drop down arrow here that if you don't want to see all the access objects, you can also hide them by saying, OK, I just want to see the reports. Everything else gets hidden and you can just look at the reports. So you don't have to collapse them here, but you can use the drop down arrow here in the navigation pane. And let's go back to all access objects. So when you open up one, like the table, double click, it opens up over to the right. So you have the navigation to open up your tables, queries, forms, and reports you can work on here. And there you go, there's the table. And as you recall in the earlier video, that you've got cells here in Access as what we saw in Excel as well. So in Access are called tables, and Excel is called a spreadsheet. So there's a cell for each record for the field book number, and then the book number for the field title is Draw Cartoons, and then the book price is $19.95. Let's go ahead and close out of that by clicking on the X, and you can open up all the other objects. We'll go over that later on. And then finally down below, you have what's known as a status bar. Right now it's in ready mode. If there's any errors or issues, it'll give you the status of it right down below. And then you've got your number locks here. It lets you know that it's enabled, but if you don't want to see this on the status bar, you want to customize it, go ahead and give it a right click anywhere. Right click there, right click there. It brings up the same shortcut menu and say that you don't want to see whether or not the number locks is on or off. Uncheck it, you can see it disappears. Come back up here, check it, it reappears, and there you go.